In our last tutorial, we got things set up so that NPCs turn toward the player and also have a speech bubble that appears when the player comes near. This time around, we're going to get things started so that we can actually have some communication happening. By the end of this video, you'll have created all four of the scripts that you'll need for this entire project. And you'll be able to make conversation scriptable objects that will allow you to select a speaker from a drop down menu, type in the conversation you'd like them to have, and then create branching conversation options that can be accessed via a button press. We won't get it all hooked up in this video, but we'll at least have the groundwork laid so that you can create the conversations themselves. Now, before we do anything else, as we'll be adding a couple of small scripts this time around, I recommend starting off by creating a new folder to hold all of our dialogue scripts. I'm going to move my NPC dialog one right into there and then open that up. Now we're going to start off by creating a new C -sharp script. I'm going to call this one actor SO for scriptable object, as this will be the one where we store the information about our actors. We can go right ahead and open that up. It's actually going to be a very short script. First thing we're going to do is just come up here above our class name and we want to create an asset menu. Now essentially all this is going to do is allow us in Unity to be able to right click and then create the actor scriptable object. Scriptable objects do not have a start or update method and that's because they aren't mono behaviors, meaning they aren't attached to actual game objects within your scene. Instead as scriptable objects they exist outside of the scene and are great for holding on to information and variables that you like to access at any time and from any scene. At this point, there's really just two pieces of information we need to hold. The first is going to be a public string, which will be the actor name. And second will be a public sprite, which will be the actor portrait. You can save that, and just like that, we are done our first script. Back in Unity, let's put this script to work by right-clicking. We can now go to Create, and we can create an actor scriptable object. At this point, you can just name it. My first one will be Willard. And then we can head over here to the side where you can add the name that you want to display when he speaks and also the sprite you'll use for his image. I have a pre-prepared image of his head here that I'll use as my portrait. Let's create another one for a, another potential character. All right, and while you're here, it certainly doesn't hurt to create a folder as ultimately you'll have many of these. Let's call this actor scriptable objects. And we can store those in there. There's going to be a total of four scripts that we're using for this tutorial series, and we're going to create the third one right now. I'm just going to call this one Advanced Dialog SO for Scriptable Object. I'm using the Advanced tag just to keep this distinguished from my Simple Dialog system, which is a different tutorial series. This is where we will hold the conversation itself that is happening in the game, so you can double click that and we'll create this script. Similar to how our actor scriptable object allowed us to create different objects for each actor, this advanced dialog SO script will allow us to create different objects for each conversation we want to have. So once again, we'll get rid of the mono behavior and make this a scriptable object. We'll add the create asset menu line so we can add them into the game, and then we'll get rid of our start and update methods. For our first line here, we're going to make a public array reference to our dialogue actors. Now, for the moment, it's not going to like that, and that's okay. We can just leave it for now, but this will become a drop-down menu that allows us to select which actor is speaking for each line of the dialogue. Next up, I'm going to add a header. This is purely optional, but I like it as it helps to keep my inspector nice and clean, and we'll call this one Random Actor Info. This is where we'll enter the specific name and portrait information for any actors that are not recurring actors in the game. So if you just have a random street person that only talks once in the game, and you don't want to create a actor scriptable object for them, you can enter their information here. So we need a public string called random actor name, and we also need a public sprite called random actor portrait. I'm going to add one more optional thing here. This is a tool tip that just when you mouse over it in the game, you'll be able to see that this is only needed if random is selected for the actor. I'll just comment this out so we don't get any errors and show you what this looks like. So already, with just that little bit done, we should now be able to right click, go to create, and you should be able to create your dialog scriptable object. Let's just call this conversation one for now. Now over here on the side, you should already be able to see that if you hover over, you get the tooltip only needed if random selected. You can also see our heading and we can enter in information. 
Now we can actually add something so that the conversation can happen. I'll make another header here. We'll call this one dialog. And this time around, we're going to make a public string array called dialog. This array will make it so that we now have a numbered array in the inspector. And we can just add each line as we like by hitting the plus button and then typing what we would like each text box to display. Now you'll notice that this doesn't give us a lot of room to write our text. So we can go back into our code and underneath the header, we can add text area. Now when we look in our inspector, we'll see that we've got a lot more room to write and see what's actually going to appear in our text boxes. Now the next thing we want to do is create options for the player to respond to a question. So I'll make another tooltip here and we'll just say that this one will be the words that appear on the option buttons. And we're going to make another public string array and this one's just going to be called option text. And this will be what appears on the buttons that you get to choose from. So let's say that in this conversation, what's up is a question and you'd like to have three different answers you can give. You can just add three and then type in what you would like to appear on each of the buttons for the player to choose from. Now, having options is great, but we actually want to create the opportunity for this conversation to branch depending on what you choose. So here we're going to create a public advanced dialog SO, which you'll notice is the same name as this script. And that's because we're going to want to actually be able to put in different dialogue conversations depending on which option is chosen. And I'm actually going to number these beginning at option number zero. The idea here is that now when we're back in Unity, we'll be able to craft a whole dialogue. For example, if the player chooses not much, we can create a new dialogue scriptable object called not much, write in what we would like to be said as a response. Then we can go back to our main conversation, take not much, and put it in the option that matches that choice. Now at this point, I'd like to be able to add in the ability to choose predetermined actors from a drop-down menu. And to do that, we're going to have to create the final of our four scripts for this tutorial series. You can right-click, go to Create C Sharp Script, and we're going to call this one Advanced Dialog Manager. Now this script is going to be our largest script that we create, and that's because it's going to be actually executing all of the dialogue on our various NPCs throughout the game. To get started though, we're just doing one little thing, and that is going to be creating an enumeration. To do this, we're going to head down below our final curly bracket. The reason we're heading outside of the code is because we want to make this enumeration a globally accessible one, not just accessible within this script. So you can type in public enum, we'll call this dialogue actors. At this point, you can put the name of every actor you know you'll have in your game. It's also important to put random. This is what will allow it to know that it needs to check to see which portrait, sprite, and name you manually input, as well as branch, which will let the script know when it needs to give you options. At the end, you can put a semicolon to close that off. If you've never worked with enumerations before, they are incredibly handy. They allow you to create drop-down menus with predetermined items in them. With that done, we can head over to our advanced dialogue scriptable object and just remove the comment from our dialogue actors as we've now created that enumeration. You can then save and head back to Unity. So now when we get into Unity, we can click on our conversation and we can now go on our actors and we can click the plus to add who's speaking. So here we could have Willard say hey, and then for our next line, we could have Martin respond with what's up. And at this point, we want to head into a branch. So I could select branch and my script will then know that it needs to display the three options and then pick the appropriate answer depending on what the player chooses. Now, obviously at this point we can't test this just yet. That's where we're headed in our next tutorial where we'll actually get our manager up and running so that it can execute these conversations. Hope you found this video helpful. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.